you know, we're a hardcore R&D company. Mm -hmm. Like we spent the first six years developing the core technology without any revenue, you know, without any sales. Like we were just proving, can you actually get a yeast to make animal protein better than a chicken? Like that was a question that we were trying to answer. Um, and, and so it, it was a little, it was tricky, um, but we've been very fortunate um, in large part because we've been able to attract investors that don't see this as a three to five year mm -hmm. um, time horizon, but really is that they want to build generational companies that will fundamentally change the way that the world eats. And that, um, and, and that's not going to be an overnight game. You know, this is not, this is not software. Like we're making physical products that people are eating every single day. We're about to launch this product. Oh, wow. uh, this is the newest version um, of, of, our, of our product. It comes from a protein in the egg. Hey everyone, this is a great interview by Forbes of Atero Elizondo of The Every Company. They're about to launch a new product. Let's take a look at that. But it has no eggy taste and no eggy smell, but it's very high quality. And so um, it's really soluble and you can essentially add it and drizzle it, drizzle it to almost you know, any drink, any soup, coffee, tea, whatever product you want, whatever you like to drink in the mornings and get your protein um, without really having to think about it. And what we really get excited about is how can we reimagine protein delivery altogether? Mm -hmm. That when people think about, when, when they ask the question, where do you get your protein from? They'll oftentimes say meat, you know, um, dairy or eggs or seafood. But what if you could get it in your morning coffee every morning? Mm -hmm. What if you could get your protein in your smoothies and your ice cream um, and your frappuccinos? And so I'll, um, I'll, I'll show you, this is what we call our liquid gold okay. it has over 10 grams of protein in this little packet but you can you can put up to 30 or 40 grams of protein in this and what does it taste like um it's kind of like honey okay it's and that's why you call it the gold it has this so if you look at it uh, oh wow it's, it's yeah it's, it's like, like a honey. yeah it's like a do you want to taste it okay yeah So this one has a little bit of lime juice um, and a little bit of monk fruit. Um, and it's like this little honey that you can add to your oatmeal in the mornings mm -hmm. or to whatever and then boost it. So you don't have to think about where you're getting your protein that day. And it's completely animal free. Completely animal free. Okay. Wow. Um, but it is real egg protein. And would you ever consider selling this directly to the consumers or any future products? We've thought about it. Um, right now we are... I mean, I just, this product has to exist. Mm -hmm. And right now, um, we're talking to some really amazing companies in, in launching it in a lot of different form factors. So my hope is to say B2B as much as possible, but ultimately, you know, um, we, may, we may end up doing something like that in the future, but okay. not, not in the near future. Okay, the companies that you're selling your products to these proteins, are they typically like manufacturers of like vegan food or is it like all inclusive? Yeah, we actually, specialize in non-vegan companies. So companies that sell to everyone. Okay. Um, because ultimately, and, and part of the beauty of this technology is that they're, they're animal protein, so they have the taste, the texture, the aroma, the functionality, the foaming binding, but without having to use the water, the land, the energy, the supply chain risk, the salmonella. Um, and so really for us, um, our focus really is on how do we get the 99% of companies and consumers that are not vegan uh, or vegetarian to embrace, um, to not only embrace these, but like really, really uh, get excited about these products. Yeah, because there's like a giant consumer base who like probably, you know, tries to go vegan here and there, yeah. but like they just can't do it. So did you have those sorts of consumers in your mind? Yeah, exactly. But also thinking about like, the people who don't even know what vegan is, right? Like my, my mom, like when I think about the kind of company that we want to be and what our litmus test is, is like, can we get, you know, my mom in Texas, yeah. you know, my cousins in Mexico, like if they, um, if they buy these products and sometimes without even knowing, because ultimately as a B2B company, our goal is 
to be ubiquitous um, and work with the world's biggest food companies. And oftentimes eggs and, 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 and ingredients are not, you know, are, are, are not necessarily always the reasons why people buy, for example, a cake, mm -hmm. right, or a cookie or pastas or, or, or you know, wine. Um, but there are all of these ingredients that go, um, that go underneath that power those products um, that we can ultimately enable. Yeah, and t take me back to the time when you were first like ideating this yeah. company. What motivated you to really like, get into proteins that are yeah. like, lab grown? I, I was in Geneva, Switzerland. And I was, I thought I was going to work in government. I was trying to get into the UN and because I wanted to help do something good for the world in some shape or form, but I didn't know what that was, what, what that was going to look like. And then I read this article that with the headline, China doubles, it doubles its own meat consumption in less than 20 years. Okay. Um, and in the, in the article, there was this chart of GDP per capita and animal protein consumption with all the world's countries mapped. And there was also a one-to-one -one correlation. Um, and I realized that the appetite for animal protein goes beyond preferences. It's so cultural and it's so, you know, embedded in, in our psyche as, as, as a world um, that there was just not, I realized that there was not enough land or water to satiate that kind of demand. And so I knew that there just, there had to be a way to fundamentally make protein at scale in a way that doesn't destroy the planet. Okay, amazing. And tell me, why the B2B model? Why not use these proteins, make your own products, yeah. sell those directly to the consumer? Why did you choose the B2B yeah. model? I wanted to have the the biggest impact I possibly could. And I thought, well, there are hundreds of companies that touch millions if not billions of people um, all over the world. And for us, our mission is how do we get high quality protein into the hands of every human in every corner of the earth, making it really accessible for people to, to, to eat products that are good for them and good for the planet. And so I knew that if we could instead be the intel inside and partner with the world's biggest food companies it's that was the fastest way for us to truly change the world yeah definitely and tell me what the fundraising journey was like because that that can be tricky <laughs> yeah i mean we are um what it was especially tricky because you know we're a hardcore R&D company. Mm -hmm. Like we spent the first six years developing the core technology without any revenue, you know, without any sales. Like we were just proving, can you actually get a yeast to make animal protein better than a chicken? Like that was a question that we were trying to answer. Um, and, and so it, it was a little, it was tricky, um, but we've been very fortunate um, in large part because We've been able to attract investors that don't see this as a three to five year mm -hmm. um, time horizon, but really is that they want to build generational companies that will fundamentally change the way that the world eats. And that um, and, and that's not going to be an overnight game. You know, this is not this is not software. Like we're making physical products that people are eating every single day. Um, and so it's a different kind of mentality. But we've been you know, we started out with 50 K. $50,000 in cash um, and three months of lab space from a company, from an, a, a VC fund called Indie Bio. And since then, we've raised over $240 million um, to build up the technology and really now start getting the getting our products into the hands of consumers. Amazing. And speaking of, you know, that generational timeline you're trying yeah. to is there anything exciting or new coming down the pipeline for the Ever Company? Yeah. Um, one of the things that... I really think about is there's one area about you know what we know is how do we improve the products that are in the market today right how you know for example a lot of our products are around replacing eggs for baking and 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 and, um, and cooking and other and other ingredient applications but really I think there's a lot of opportunity as well for how do we use this technology to blow people's minds to create products that are not a me too that it's not like oh we're trying to make the same thing mm -hmm. 
but that truly create a paradigm shift. My mom would make amazing Mexican homemade meals. We had eggs for breakfast every single morning. We had carne asadas and barbecues every weekend. Like, I didn't think I was killing the planet. I just didn't know. The environment around me wasn't conducive to me making the right choices. I think we're all trying to do our best. Unlike other foods, the egg is not just a tasty product. It is a functional ingredient. It does things that are almost impossible to replace. We could make a world of a difference in terms of how the world consumes. And the way to do that is by acknowledging that we can't do it alone. We need everyone to be involved, the consumer as well as all of these companies. We've partnered with the world's biggest food companies and have launched three products, including the world's first animal-free egg white. If my mom can go to a grocery store and buy the same angel fruit cake and it just so happened to be sustainable and it was just as delicious, I would know that we've made it. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.